Yo, this is Manj Music. Mindy Ho. And Noobster. And you're watching Rajgun on Open, Open Chest. Chest. It is about my nephew, Anoop, a.k.a. Noobster. Woo! I am so excited about this conversation. So for all of you guys um, who are tuning in, welcome to another edition of Open Chest with Rajgun Live. I'm your host, Rajgun, and I'm super psyched to be coming to you today, two days away from the release of what the music pundits are saying will be the album release of the year. 14-year-old Anoop Singh, aka Noobster, the son of musical icons Manj Music and Lindy Gore, is dropping a 10 original song digital album worldwide this Saturday, October the 10th, and it's called Alter Ego. Welcome to the show, family. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah. Nice, to, nice to be on the show. Yes, absolutely. I've had you both on before, but this is the first time I'm having my nephew, Anoop, on. Nice to see you, sweetie P. I'm nice so excited. Yes, and I'm so excited that, you know, it's, it's something as big as this that's getting us to go worldwide live with everybody. Guys, I want to actually, for those of you who... Um, you know, want to get some context around the conversation we're going to be having. Um, Anoop is dropping this album in the next two days, as I said, and it really is an album everyone is talking about. They um, are setting it up as being the album release of the year. And considering the year we've had, we need an album that's going to lift our spirits, don't we? So with that, yeah. So with that said, let me just give you a little bit of context because what I'm excited about um, having this conversation um, with these guys is the fact that this is going to be the third brand that is being released from this incredible family. Yeah, and, that's and, true. Right? And to give you guys all out there in, in the world of Instagram, in the world of um, Facebook, a little, little bit of context around the first two brands, let me just give you a little bit of information about that. So Man's Music came onto the scene in 2000 as part of the legendary Bhangra band, RDB. They took the world by storm with a unique style of Bhangra meets hip hop meets Bollywood. Following massive success in this, Manj decided that he wanted to explore other styles of music and collaborate with a wider group of artists. So after a hiatus, he came back strong as Manj Music, the music director and singer-songwriter, and has since collaborated with more than any other Indian artist in terms of mainstream musical artists. Um, not to mention, he's also created hit after hit in Bollywood, in films, um, many of them that you guys are very familiar with. And he has a huge loyal following on social that surpasses across 10 million followers worldwide. Nindi, Nindi, my girl, who I love so much, my sister. Nindi Gore came onto the scene in 2002 after marrying Manj, who encouraged her. And I'm going to use that word because I'm I going was to, about to say it was <laughs> forced. <laughs> <laughs> encouraged. Uh, exactly. <laughs> who encouraged her to bring her unique singing voice to the masses. And what an awesome decision that was because she quickly amassed a loyal following around the world for her collaborations with RDB and multiple Bollywood hit songs to her credit. But being the woman that she is, and one of the many reasons I admire her, Nindi then forayed into entrepreneurship as the founder of Nindi Cosmetics, Nindi Gore Cosmetics, which can never be, you know, can, can never be always you know, in stock. I find that like as soon as she <laughs> drops something, it's like out of boom, stock. Poof, <laughs> out of stock. Poof, it's out of stock. So you can go check that out definitely. And I, I feel the reason is, is that one thing I know about Nindi and I know about Manj um, as well is they're both really authentic um, people, you know, in their personal realm. So the art they put out there, the products they put out there are always kind of very indicative to who they are themselves. And I feel that's, um, a lot of what's got to do with, you know, the mass Bollywood celebrity following that Nindi has with her cosmetics and the millions of people that, you know, follow her around the world as well. So Manj and Nindi share, and this is the purpose of us going live today, a very <laughs> talented 14-year-old son, Anoop Singh. He is a chip of the old block, taking the best from his mother and father to create a strong identity 
all of his own, which I'm assuming is the reason that he decided to call his debut album Alter Ego. Before we get into that, Anoop is not new to the music scene and um, he's collaborated with well-known artists like Raftar and Humble the Poet in the past. And, you know, like the rest of the world, I have to ask you, Anoop, I'm starting off with you, darling, throwing you in the deep end. I'm, <laughs> I'm curious about why you decided to name the album Alter Ego. Was it because you have two very strong brands already in your family in their own right? And that, you know, as you launch, this is about you. This is about identifying who you are as an artist, as a young man, and, and as a voice in your own right. So tell me a little bit about you know, why you decided to call the album Alter Ego. I feel that's what the reason was, but I want to hear it from you. So the name basically came from, we were ma basically making the whole thing. And obviously dad, he's had a history of making a lot of Bhangra songs and everything. So yes. I, I honestly, personally don't listen to absolutely anything to do with Bhangra. <laughs> I really? Nothing. I know nothing about it. I only listen to like mainstream like Travis, Weekend, Bryson Tiller, Drake, all these guys. So right. I like making music like them. And um, dad really likes the music as well. So I thought instead of doing the whole same old, same old, because Manj Music is known as um, the guy who makes like Pongra hits and everything. But Absolutely. I decided an alter ego, another guy, J Man, who's complete opposite of him and loves trap, hip hop. And it just has a really dark tone to it. Absolutely. Oh, my God. So that's about your father and his alter ego, which I feel he created. And, you know, man, you'll have to talk to us about that, which he created so that we are very defined about the fact that this is not about you as man's music. And yeah, this exactly. is about noobster and what that stands for what his music stands for and you know the legacy that he's obviously going to create because duh he's he's <laughs> you know it's in his dna so why don't you just touch base on that a little bit man yeah, since, yeah you know, basically talked about it already obviously every everybody um will automatically kind of know that j-man is me regardless anyway um but can i tell you something before you carry on so when i looked at the album cover and i saw j-man like who's j-man so you know with my old woman eyes i had to kind of <laughs> had to make the you know album cover larger to have a look who is this dude and i'm like dude that's it that's my bro man <laughs> i know that face <laughs> yeah so i mean really it was just exactly what you said it, i did not want this album to shine because it's connected to a brand that's been going for years and years and years yes uh, it's connected to j-man now really who is j-man who nobody knows j-man nobody's ever heard of j-man and if it comes up on people's spotify playlists on yeah. their itunes it says noobster and j-man it, right. nobody's going to connect with this because the brand is there they'll connect because his music shines and what we wanted is we wanted him to shine as a music producer more than shining because he's the son of man's music rdb or indycore 100 and, and, and you know what and you know what i really got that and i feel that also is something that you guys have been really really smart about from the get-go like back in you know 2000 onwards when you guys you know <clears throat> first started you know on the scene before people even knew what branding was or you know you know creating kind of personas and identity in the public you guys were very clear on what you were as a brand man you were a part of rdb and nindi when you came on the scene you were quite clear and adamant that if i'm going to be you know partaking in this kind of musical journey i need to be there as my own identity as myself you never ever um you know looped yourself in with rdb you were quite clear that i am nindi working with rdb so it's it's, it's almost like right from the beginning you yeah. guys had a really good sense of what branding was all about. Mindy, why don't you share a little bit also about why you decided that that's the way it needed to be? Because it just kind of, you know, most people would be like, you know what, RDB is really, really successful. It's so easy for me to just be the female voice of that band. Yeah. But that's not what you wanted. And you were clear and adamant about that. Yeah. Uh, firstly, Roger, I would say that because I'm kind of old school as well. So when I... When so they, are my girlfriend. Yeah, so <laughs> when they brought me in, I kind of did think that, okay, now what I'm going to get is a lot of 
oh, she's just riding off our DB. Oh, she's just riding off our DB. And I really didn't want that. I mean, yeah. even a lot of people did say that um, at first. And then I just said to Manja as well, I said, because I remember the boys sitting with me and said, you know, saying, we want you to be like this. We want you to be the Indian chain. We want you to be the Indian Beyonce and all this. And it was hard because you kind of, you, you get a bit nervous. You're thinking, okay, I, I, I want to be myself, but yeah. these guys are trying to create something else because they want something else out there. They want that Beyonce out there. And so I remember just saying to Manj, Manj, if I'm going into this industry, I know a lot of people have yeah. a different personality on stage and a different personality at home, but I just kind of want to show that this is Nindi and this is the way Nindi is and I just want to be real. And right. they were like, okay, just go for it. Right. And you know what? That was a testament to, um, you know, why it was very clear about who you were as a brand. It's very clear about who RDB was. It's very clear about who Man's Music is. And that, you know, just kind of understanding of being sure that you're being authentic to who you are as a person and as, as, a, as an identity is clearly, you know, um, you know, there in, 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 in this kind of album that's being released, even in the title itself, as I mentioned off the top, Alter Ego, you're forcing people to look at what it is you want them to see rather than them deciding what they're going to think about this. And, and I think yeah. that was really, really smart and clever branding. And I want, I want to go back to um, Anoop. Anoop, you call yourself Noopster. I yeah. mean, as a Brit, I understand that. But for all those around the world that don't get that, tell me why you decided that was going to be your music avatar. I don't know. We just, we kind of sat down and we thought, okay, we obviously need to incorporate my name in it somehow, but not just keep it as Anoop or Noopy or anything like that. So we just randomly came up, we kept saying a bunch of stuff here and there. And then I think was it? I think you came up with it. And yeah, like, Noobster, you yeah. said Noobster, and I was like, oh, okay, that name sounds sick. Trust <laughs> me, it's very, very picky, very picky. Very, so yes, you know, I, I had to that. go through a whole bunch of names, and no, no, I don't like this. No, I don't like this. No, I don't like this. <laughs> and you know, Noopy is his like his little nickname at oh. home, and you know, only you know, that's family. Mama's name. That's Mama's yeah. name. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And he likes being called Anoop by everybody else. And I was like, you know what? You need a stage name. You need a, you know, that, that alias name on the stage. Right. So you loved it. You like Noopster. So I was like, okay, let's do it. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about um, how you guys, before we like get into the actual album itself, which I'm super excited. I have so many questions to ask. I could go on forever. You guys know me, British, <laughs> um, Indian, a woman, chatterbox. It's like, it's what I am. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but what I wanted to ask before we actually head into the album is question for both you, Nindi and Manj, how, how were you okay with him foraying into such a mass, you know, cause you know, this is going to be a question. So we're going to address it right off the top into such a mass public, um, arena, um, at such a young age, like tell us a little bit about your kind of ideology behind that. Cause one thing I do know about my sister, Nindi is everything is on purpose and nothing happens without there being an absolute, you know, clear understanding of what's going on. Yeah. I think, I think there's two different answers to this because I approach it differently to Nindi. Okay. Right? Okay. So I want both your answers. Well, you hear this. <laughs> okay. okay. So I, obviously my whole life has been around being in public and being in the the public eye yes. so as much as even nindy's has but nindy's nindy's let's just say well let, i'll let her answer whatever but for me it's very normal it's right. it's very very normal it's very i'm used to it i don't mind it um i quite like it so i'm okay with it um so for me for for Noopy to go into this whole new digital world of going onto youtube and instagram and blah 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 was a little scary i think you know as parents we was obviously very very we was kind of keeping it very under control first making sure that and as you can see you know he's not even on twitter he's not even on facebook he, right. only, just, he only recently got onto instagram because we launched the raftar track and we got a lot of fans from india but now i'm okay with it because i feel as though he's he's at an age now where he i can kind of tell him that listen we need to do this to engage this audience we, right. We're kind of teaching him, not from the pro, uh, from the aspect of of be famous, but this is business. Right. 
in a business term. Like I want him to move forward on a business term that, you know, fans are going to be there and you're going to make music for fans and you love the fans and the fans love you. And if you don't have the fans, of course, you know what, you're, you're, you're not a, a music producer. You're not going to shine without the fans liking your music. Absolutely. Um, but in order to engage with fans, in order to capture their hearts, get, get into their ears, get into their eyes, this is what you need to do. So I'm kind of treading slowly but carefully and I keep feeding in little bits and bats here and there of this is how you need to control uh, yourself in the new age, digital age of digital media and, and the public. Basically. So I'm okay with it. I'm happy with it. Right. I think Ninja's the security guard, momager. <laughs> yeah. uh, she sees it in a different way. Absolutely. And I want to come to you now, Nindi, your thoughts, because obviously I, I get where Manj is coming from because he has been in the industry for so long and he's a man. You know, these are all kind of dynamics which are very different from women like us who are, you know, South Asian women who are moms and we're brought up to be nurturers. We're also entrepreneurs in our own right as well, but we have a multiple dimension of the way that we look at things as opposed to, you know, the dudes, they know that, you know, You've, you've got it. Like yeah. Manj knows that you've got everything in order so he can, he can be Manj, he can do his thing and he yeah. does it, you know, phenomenally. So let me, let me hear it from you because, you know, there's a worldwide, um, you know, audience out there of women, of ethnic women, of women who have multiple jobs just like you do, right? Both within the home and um, also, um, you know, as a businesswoman in your own right. Um, mm -hmm. What were your thoughts and how did you kind of get your head around um, the thought that you know what this world is about, right? Like from the inside, you know what yeah. to expect on the good, the bad and the ugly. What were your thoughts around, I guess, quote unquote, allowing this to happen? Because, he, you know, obviously Anoop is, you know, underage. He needs yeah. your permission to do this. Give us your thoughts around that, because I know there's tons of women out there, especially women from our culture, who um, grapple with you know, what they feel comfortable with allowing their kids to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm of the thought that, you know, I need to encourage my son to, to be and do what he needs to be and do because this is his life and it's his karma, it's his dharma. And my job is to make sure that with my wisdom of experience that I'm able to help him navigate his journey until he's able to navigate it himself. Tell me your thoughts, my love. Okay, so when Nupi was quite young, I mean, obviously, I think the first time I ever took Nupi on tour was, he was three months old. Yes. <laughs> so that was the first time I got on a plane. It was from Toronto to, to India. Um, you know, I just kind of knew since then, Raj, I That's remember it. having him on the flight and thinking, right, this is going to actually be his life from today onwards. Right. Um, then I think when he was about three, four years old, I remember we did a, we did a university gig. At, I think it was Western University. Western University. Oh my gosh. That was the first time, because obviously I used to have, we used to always have him backstage. So one of the boys from our team used to always have him backstage. I just wanted him with me, no matter what, at, at every course. show, at every point. And, and I get that. Yeah. And one of the, one of the boys was holding Nippy backstage. And I think he couldn't control Nupi because Nupi was like, I need to get on that stage. I need to go. <laughs> so he just let him go. And Anoop came out on the stage. And this is like Anoop's first time on stage in front of a really big crowd. And this guy here is running up and down, blowing kisses to the girl, <laughs> touching their hands like this. So I knew from then, Raj, I thought, right. okay, you know what? He's a natural. Like right. you said, it's in his DNA. Yes. And he's definitely, no matter what, he's going to do something in music. And then I've seen him every day with Manch since then. Since yes. He's like a baby in the studio, sitting in Manch's lap. We have videos of him touching keys and everything. And I, I just knew that, okay, he is going to be in the entertainment, in the music industry, no matter what. Right. So I think straight away, you know, that mummy hat of, okay, I need to be protective as well, because just like you said, there's a lot of things that happen behind the scenes. Yes. Nupi has from a young age, because he's been backstage, because he's always been with me, he has seen things happening backstage. Right. And we have physically been able to say to him, Nupi, that's something you don't want to do. Right. That's something you don't want to go near. And he has seen the outcome of people doing you know such things doing dumb things yeah absolutely exactly. yeah. yeah 
So we've kind of, you could call it brainwash or whatever. He like firmly knows at the age of 14 now that, yeah, I don't want to do that. And another thing I really love about him, he's very 50-50 like me and Manj. But I love the fact he's got that side of me of, I don't want to be famous. Right. I don't care, uh, you know, to be out on a stage and everybody screaming for me. What I do want, mom, dad, I want my music to be out there. I want people to really listen to my music and enjoy my music. So I feel so much at ease. And I think to myself, I've got to a point now where I leave him to it, to make the decision. Right. It's just like you said with your son, you know, yeah. you're going to guide him. Yeah. So, you know, if you see it going left, right a little bit, you're going to bring him on the straight and narrow again. 100%. And I think that, you know, Raj, and this is from your experience as well. We were brought up very differently and we're raising our kids very differently. Absolutely. You know, we do as much as I can say, well, nobody's a perfect parent. But we know the do's and don'ts. And the best thing about Anoop is he has 24-7 been with me and Manj. And we're, as much as yet, we are his mum and dad, but we're his best mates as well. Right. So it's so nice for us to just sit with him and say, listen, Anoop, you don't want to do that because you know the outcome could be this. Da, da, da. And he'll just grasp it in a second and say, you know what, you guys are right. Yeah. So we're just really, really fortunate that it's this way. You know, right. And by the end of the day, we drill him every day. You know, your education is important. Your education yes. is important. You know, you, you know, whatever you want to do, do it, get your degree, whatever. But remember, you can, you can have your music career. It's not a problem. But right. you really need something else to fall back on. Right. And that's the, that's the momager you're talking right there, right? Hell yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's the momager. Oh, oh my by God. The way, I check it. The other thing is I check his DMs and I filter them and... I yes, I, I believe you. She Girl. is checking everything. <laughs> and I get, I get labeled a psycho by his dad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're okay with those labels, man. Yeah. I can't even. I can't even go into the studio and and take one of his beats without passing it through Momager over here, <laughs> who has a signed contract and agreements I have to sign, and then I can move forward. That's a, yeah. That's a, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. I love it. So let's talk about this album. Um, Anoop, I'm going to come to you first. Why did you decide that you wanted to launch an album right now? I just thought seeing how everybody's stuck at home. Yeah. Uh, everybody has literally no choice but to do whatever they want and especially listen to music. And I thought this is probably the best year for music to be released because everyone has no choice but to listen to music. Right. So giving them something to just listen to, to dance to or something at home. Make I just happy. thought, yeah, why not make an album with dad, a few other people as well, and just make them really happy. You're such a smart cookie, hey? <laughs> <laughs> totally a chip off the old block. You know, <laughs> what could be a better time to, you know, launch an album and for people to take it seriously when the world is at standstill as it is yeah. now. And when people really need that kind of, you know, that lift up, that, that, that sense of feeling a part of, you know, communal, um, you know, worldwide, um, you know, feelings that we all want to have that are positive. So let's talk a little bit about these 10 songs that you decided to put together with um, J-Man. Um, let's talk a little bit about how you chose them because I can imagine that, that you probably had a ton of different options to think about here. And, you know, I guess my first question here is, you know, the typical route and, you know, I'm, I'm almost, you know, stopping myself from asking this question because I already know what Manja's going to say, but the typical, because he doesn't do anything typical, but the typical route is you, you know, you drop a couple of songs and then you follow it up with an album, right? You're not doing that. Talk to me about why this is the way you're doing it. The album drops and then you're going to pull out some singles. I'm curious. I think, um, basically he makes music every day. Every single like there isn't a, a minute where he's not making music. He makes more music than I have probably in my in whole my history. <laughs> wow. And he's constantly making music. So what was happening is he was, I mean, sometimes I, I forget that he's 14. Like right. we talk to him like on a level and we start talking about, okay, da, 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 and then we're like, oh, bloody hell, he's still 14. He still wants to do the normal kid stuff as well. Right. But his, his passion for music is kind of, it's like, He's got a great balance of making music and doing his kids playing and PS4 and blah, blah, blah. So right. what was happening was he was making so much music. I was like, listen, if we drop 
a song after a song after a song. We could be here for like years because you just keep, and he's he's exactly like my older brother. There's like a there's a, a, a part of my older brother Kolipadi that's inside him, right? Which is which is basically he's impatient. He, 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 uh, let's make it. Let's move <laughs> to the next one. Let's move yeah. to the next one. Let's move to the next one. And and that's but what that's, he's like. But that's but that's why our, our RDB was so successful. It was like the push of yeah. your older brother. I mean, that's why you guys became worldwide. He put you guys out there, right? Yeah, so I get yeah, it. Yeah. I love yeah. that he's got the DNA of all of you, like the magic, you know, yeah. moments that are important. Somehow he is that cocktail of it all. I love that you recognize that. Uh, oh, 100 percent. I saw that straight from the get go. When, he, when got he does his... these kind of things, we always say, OK, Kuli, Kuli, okay, Kuli, Kuli calm, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down Kuli. 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 Yes. So because yes. he was he's so eager to keep making music and keep releasing stuff, I said, like, Nupi, you know what? I don't think it's any point releasing singles and singles and singles. Let's right. just put the whole album together. Do you want to do a whole album? And he goes, Look, Dad, honestly, I don't care. Album singles. I just want to make music. Like, like right. let's just let's just make stuff. And I was like, Okay. So that's when I thought, Okay, he's not that knowledgeable about the Pongra industry because obviously right. he's not listening to so much Pongra and Punjabi music even though we do try to push him to listen to more Punjabi music. Yeah, that, that song's okay, Dad, that song's like okay. He's like he's Brown Mandela. Like he's, yeah. he loves A.P. Tello and some yes. of the current old stuff. Like he's liking some of the- Still that's the, trap, though. It's, yeah, okay, Brown it's, it's, it's hip hop Punjabi <laughs> music is what he likes. Right. So, so I said, okay, why don't you make beats? I'll start coming up with some compositions and sometimes, you know, um, he'd make a beat and I'd go running into the studio and go, Nupi, that's brilliant, that's amazing. You know what, let me think of an idea for this. Blah, blah, blah. And, wow. and I said, okay, Nupi, you know what? Let's just put the album, let's make one full album, 10 tracks. In fact, he, end, he ended up making 15 tracks, yeah, I think. He wow. 15. Let's select right. the 10, uh, yeah. let's get some different features on there and put the album out and then we'll see how it goes. And then Nupi was like, uh, are we going to release videos? And- uh, I love, I love you, darling. I love, <laughs> I love you. Right? I, I, and, and I said, um, yeah, Nupi, of course, if you want to do videos. And he's like, I don't want to do videos. And I was like, oh, no, I, don't ah. I don't want to be in the videos. Oh. I don't want videos, but I don't want to be in the videos. I don't want to That's be interesting. And I says, oh, why don't you want to be in the videos? Because obviously with every music you release, you should be in the video. And he's like, no, dad, I'm not really, fe like I don't, I, I, my personal preference is not to want to be in a video. Like I don't mind just making the music and being in the background, but I'm not really big fan of like being in the video, even though, you know, he did his party and uh, yes. know, bling bling Mr. Singh and all that. Yes. He used to love being in videos. He used to love it. Yeah. I, I, think, I think personally, yeah. I mean, you can ask him directly now, but I think if we put him in front of the camera, I think he won't have any issues, to be honest. Right, of course, because um, it's, it's, it's the world he grew up in, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 But and I he, guess that's why the fame of it all, um, you know, Anoop, isn't like that big a deal for you because it's not something that you haven't experienced, right? So, yeah, you know, co so coming to that, I want to ask you, um, Anu, why, why, why was it these 10 tracks made this album? Like, you know, um, Manj, your father just mentioned that there was 15 that you kind of finalized. What, what was it about these 10? Were you trying to tell a story where one leads to another or is every single track its own individual mini story um, and allowing you to have as much diversity in terms of the types of music that you wanted in your album. Like, give us a bit of a sneak peek about it, because we don't have it yet, and I'm dying to know what's on it. So basically, when we were choosing all the tracks, obviously, from so many of them that we made, there's a yeah. few here and there that kind of sounded a bit too similar. And I was like, okay, get rid of all the ones that sound similar and keep it completely different. This needs to be its own theme. This needs to be its own theme throughout the whole thing. There can't be a single one that's like, oh, okay, that kind of sounds like it It was already played before. It right. needs to be like each one is fresh to your brain. Wow. Oh, I'm so excited. So what types of um, music um, are on this album? Like in, you know, genres of music? There's trap. There's uh, commercial. There's, um, what else? Maybe like a bit of reggaeton like yeah there's like tracks nice. mixed in with each other you've got like the latino ones well. yeah, yeah like Ooh, nice. he, he gets all these he gets all these inspirations from the music he's listening to right mm -hmm. so and this is sometimes like majority of the music that we don't listen to me and indy and mm -hmm. when he's listening to this stuff he comes like who do you listen to where did your inspiration from weekend most of the time yeah. weekend yeah yeah very versatile artist i get yeah. that 
I do. So let me ask you this. You are also launching um, one of your songs. It's dropping soon. Or has it dropped already? Ji Karda? No, that's going to uh, that's basically the first music video that's going to release with the whole album. So we already gave that G Karda song to BBC, who Bobby Friction did the official worldwide exclusive. So wow. basically the radio stations were like, you know, give us one song at least. I know you're right. going to release the album on Saturday, but right. we want one song we can promote. So I right. said to Nupi, what, what song do you think? And he, he's, he likes Izu stuff. He, he loved Izu. I mean, he's doing really yeah. well in the UK. Yeah. So he was like, you know what, let's do that one. And we kind of, we kind of filtered it out to a few people, radio stations and whatnot, and said, what do you think? Do you th yeah. The whole album had a little listening session. Yeah. Um, and everybody said G Garda would be, should be a perfect commercial song to release first as okay. a music video and to give to radio stations. Okay, perfect. And so let's talk a little bit about what parts of these songs were kind of, you know, done by who? So in other words, you guys collaborated on this and then you had these other external collaborators as well. How, how did that all kind of come together? I love the stories behind creating art. It all starts with him, right? Yes. Because there is nothing that I can build onto without that foundation there. Right. And what he does in the studio foundation wise is always something completely out different. of the box. Yeah, and, and every time, even just yesterday, he made something again in the studio here. And, and me and Nidhi were like, that's so cool. It's just something that I would never make. Right. Um, yeah, oh, I love that. None of his beats sound similar. None neither. of his beats sound the same. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And um, well, that's an he, important point to make that like yeah. he's he's not like an extension of you guys he is no. his own entity again that comes back to the yeah. cleverly titled album as well yeah. i mean what is my alter ego check out these 10 tracks and you'll get to meet who that is right yeah, absolutely yeah. and he uses a completely different music program like for programming music yeah i don't use the program he's using to make music i need to tell you this roger it was so tell funny me. because I'm not familiar with the music uh, programs and stuff. So I, I was sitting in the living room and I remember Newby's in the studio making some music and Mag just gets up all of a sudden and I can hear Mag saying, Newby, uh, which program are you using? And I could just say, oh, how did you do that? How did you do that? I said, oh really? my Is gosh. <laughs> wow. I, I, le I learned something every day from this guy. Like I don't... Yes. I, how do you do that? How did you make this? Oh, that's kind of cool. And he's learning keys. Like he's probably really good now on the keys, uh, on the keyboard. Right. Better than me. Better than me. I was never like, you know, taught keys or anything like that. I just kind of picked it up myself a little bit here and there. Right. And now, you know, he's learned guitar and he's learning guitar himself from YouTube. So that, wow. that you know, that energy that of world, just... Eh? That world is, being able to learn anything off YouTube, yeah. right? Yeah, no. is, We um, didn't have that. This is such no. a... Honestly, between us and our generation and the generation of our kids, the the difference, the tra you know, just the, the difference between what we're exposed to, I think is more than it's ever been in the last like 500 years, like because Absolutely. of technology. Like it's incredible, this one generation the gap 100%. is huge in that respect. I, I always tell Nupi, I say, Nupi, if I had Google back then, I probably would have had about four degrees. I said, I remember yes. having one assignment to do, going to the library to find out through all the pages of yeah. you know, looking for you know sort of stuff to work on. And I said, you now it's just you sit there, you Google it, it's there. Yeah, yeah. you don't even have to leave your house. Yeah. No. Right? Yeah. Who says you can't have four degrees yet, Nindi? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> no, it does. It does. For some reason, Nins thinks that she's like 75 years old. Oh my god! I don't know how that works. Well, you're at like one hell of a hot 75 year old lady. <laughs> <laughs> so, so with these, so you know, with this album coming out in two days, what do we have to look forward to? Like, you know, what's the process of releases? Are you releasing the album first? The song first where do we go to check it all out um the album will actually release on all digital stores probably on the ninth night okay um, so the ninth night toronto time it will be out on all digital stores okay and um, officially is the 10th is the date but in india it'll hit the 10th okay. and then on the 10th we are at 12 o'clock india time uh, which will probably be in the middle of the night here uk time seven in the morning we're going to release on my youtube channel uh, the official music video for G Karta. So that will come out. Okay. Uh, and then right after that, once Lighting. that's out, you guys will have all his masterpiece in your hands. 
and 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 you guys can comment and like and and dislike you know we, we're open to even though Nins hates uh, <laughs> uh, uh, people can't even say anything nasty about myself yeah. that's okay we'll delete it Nins yeah. you can say you can yeah. say nasty stuff about me or, or Nins but you say it about Nupi and it's like <laughs> <laughs> so, she's a very protective mother obviously um, but you know what it'll be out on the 10th so everybody can go and check it out and give us some feedback and then after that we have another four videos one video which Nupi is doing a little cameo okay. feature in Okay. Um, they'll be released every 10 to 15 days after that. Every day. Wow. You guys have got all this like on lockdown, hey? Yeah. yeah. And you know what, to be honest, it, yeah. you know, in a, in a positive manner, thank God for lockdown. Yeah. Because all these videos, all this music couldn't have happened. Manj is always on the road. Luke yes. He's always schooling. We've all been all over the place doing our things. So as yes. soon as, you know, lockdown hit in Bombay, we were just constant. Yeah, it was nonstop. It was nonstop yeah. after that. Wow. So let me ask you this, um, because it just popped into my head a question that I'm really curious about. The um, album art. Talk to me about that. The album art. Do you know what? So there were so many different album yeah. arts, right? We had, we had the designer come up with a bunch of different ideas. He said, uh, first he said to me, um, okay, what, what does Nupi want to show his face? What, like, what did you want to do? And I says, no, I don't think he does, but should we do a photo shoot? And he said, do you have any pictures on hand? And I was like, okay. And I me, mean, Nindy and Nupi, we always end up going around Toronto. So we went to an area where there was like storage yeah. and we took a bunch of pictures there. Yeah. And uh, there was one picture that Nindy took with the phone, with her phone. And it was just of me with the mask on, obviously the thingy and Nupi standing there. And it wasn't a staged picture. It was just, we was out and about. We was wearing masks, I said, obviously. You guys look good. Let me take a picture. And then he said, looks yeah. good. Let's take a picture. So smart. So we took a picture. And when I sent that to the designer, he was like, I love this father-son kind of, the, the design of this. I'm, I'm having some crazy idea. I was yeah. like, okay. Then he made the artwork and sent it to me. And I mean, I got it straight away. I showed names and like, you, did you, did you get the hidden okay. message in here somewhere? Yeah. And she was like, ah, and then after five minutes, she kind of got it. Where there's mm -hmm. me and, where there's me and Nupi there and you see the sun in, in the, the back. Background. Right. I got that. It's relevant to the sun. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, and then he also made the one with the baby picture because I sent the one of Nupi when he was just a little baby sitting on the bed. And he goes, buddy, I think I have a great idea of using the baby picture. And I said to Nupi, do you mind? Did you mind? No. He was like, oh, I look so cute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, put that out as well. So we, we was like, should we put this one out? Should we put this one out? And then I said, you know what? Let's just put them all out. Yeah. Whatever. Right. Okay. And it I love out. it. I yeah, love it. Yeah. Absolutely. So this actually brings me to a question I want to ask, especially since I know, um, you know, how strong Nindi is regarding this and as well as you, Manj. Let's talk about brand image. Yeah. Um, was this something, um, you know, who you are, Anoop, you know, your, you know, visual brand image. Is that something that had participation from your parents or was it something that, you know, this is who I am and, and this is the way it's going to be? Like, talk to me a little bit, little, little bit about that. Well, I just like enjoy, I just enjoy making music and everything. I make the beats and then dad comes up with lyrics and everything. But from that point on, I just let dad take control and he does the whole marketing and showing okay. off me. And I don't, <laughs> I don't give any ideas for that. I just say, I'll make the music. You yeah. do on actually it. give ideas because I don't, well, very, very you know, ideas. Know you, I don't think you've ever noticed. Manj will bring something and say, look at this, Nupi, I'm going to put this up and everything. And he's like, Dad, that's so showing off. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Tone it down, man. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he's, he's in, in his own way, he gives us the feedback that we need. Yeah. Right. In his, in his own way. And, and right. you know what? He doesn't even realize half he's of the time that. he's even doing that. Right. And, and that's just naturally just coming out of him. Like I, I'm not having to force uh, an answer from him. I'll just be like, oh, you know, what, what do you think of this? We're going to do this. Uh, da, da. Like Nubi, like for example, we designed a cover and I showed it to him. And what did you say, Nubi? You said the art was the the font. You didn't like the font. Okay, yeah, yeah. I said I wanted the font like 
Like, yeah. Japanese style, I said. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he's like, really? oh, Dad, I, I, can we change the font? I like it like this, da, da, da. And when we changed it, it actually looked a million really times good. better. Yeah. Right. So, so he doesn't even realize some of the stuff that he, he the feedback that he gives us that is right. very, very valuable to us. Yes. Um, but we love that. We love that it's just organic. It's natural. Absolutely. I, actually, I just love Rod, the way he is, when he'll be like, just tone it down, tone it down. Because I'm not going to lie, Majesty, they're the brothers, they were the biggest show off. <laughs> <laughs> and that used to annoy me. Used to calm down. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. So that he gets so he gets that from you, your side then, right? Because oh. Because yeah, because the thing is, like, one thing I know about Nindi is that, you know, even in her most glamorous phase, you just know that Nindi's in there. It's not like a, you know, like a mask. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. there's not like a mask there. It's this is still who Nindi is. Yeah. Um, and, and I guess that's kind of what is happening here with um, Anoop as he, you know, continues to discover the person that he is. I have one minute left. No, I'm mm -hmm. good. Okay. Okay. No, no. He says I got fifteen minutes. Good. Um, because I wanted to ask you this as well. Um, in terms of the types of people that you feel this will resonate with, Anoop, what are your thoughts? Like, you know, who are you targeting? Because you, you, this is a very eclectic album. I mean, I got that really, really loud and clear. And this has nothing to do with kind of the brands of Manj Music and Nindi Core for anyone who's joining us. This is like a very, very different album. Um, so I want to, you know, be clear on who you feel your audience would be for this album. Honestly, I'm not very like sure what my audience would be. And I didn't okay. really target a specific audience. Okay. I just decided if I put the music out, then people here and there, no matter what, if they're like older or if they're uh, the youth or something and they keep listening, I just thought as long as they like the music, I'm happy then. Right, I, absolutely. It, it doesn't matter who listens to it. I just hope they enjoy the music. And absolutely. one thing, Raj, I must say that I've, I've actually just realized as we're having this conversation that me and Manj have not in his whole time of making these beats we're not telling him that he needs to change this to cater to a certain audience. No. Right. We're kind of pushing him that, uh, Nupi, just bring your own personality out. Let people know you for you. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. And in fact, he, you know what? I'm going to be honest with this. He's sparked a different, uh, a different section right. of me. Like right. his beats and his stuff that he makes, uh, some of the, when you hear the album, some of the compositions that I've made for the actual lyrics, are completely different to what I and even Nindi used to walk into the studio and said, "Man, you know what? When Nupi's making these beats and you're doing this stuff, it's completely different. It's so sick. It's so different because it's very easy, Raj, to get wrapped into catering for the audience. Like me and Man run into this problem all the time. Are people gonna like it? Are they not gonna like it? And we end up making certain changes." Um, you know, hoping people like it, you kind of right. lose yourself because you're just trying to cater to, you know, the audience. You yeah. just you want to bang out. The, there was a time, Raj, that you could make a song and you knew it was it, this it's is going to be hit. a hit. Yeah, this is yeah. A hit. yeah. Not anymore. Not anymore. Right. You don't know what's going to be a hit, what's not. But and why do you feel that is? What's changed in the music industry, guys? I think uh, just the fact of it being so open now. I think the, mm. the opportunities for small, I mean, even the smallest music producers, singers sitting in the bedrooms and uh, making the most very, very budget videos can yeah. be a huge success today right. because of this platform right here. I mean, this platform has opened the whole world yes. up to a total different um, vibe now. You know what? The platform does have its pros and cons. One thing I've learned, you know, since it is on this digital platform, mm -hmm. um, the negative of it is if, you know, people get the, the bang, the fake views on and everything, and every uh, most of the people seem to be brainwashed now that, oh, if this one's got... 10 million in 10 minutes is the best yeah. song and it could be really nothing it, i agree yeah so it's that that is that is one of the biggest faults in the digital platform today yeah yeah the that the smallest guys who are doing amazing work don't shine because the people with lots and lots of money oh, can okay. make it look like it's they are shining news. right uh, so it is it's basically it's been over i think that this this whole opening up of the internet has given everybody from lots and lots of money to people with nothing 
an opportunity, but unfortunately there is that downside where people with money will always outshine because they've got the views and they've got the counts and they've got blah, blah, blah. Absolutely. And it makes it look like the super, super duper hits and pay all the radio stations off. So absolutely, real, it's the it's the game, right? Real yeah. music from back in the day when you know a DJ used to play in the club, and we were like, "Oh my God, this is That's a crazy it. tune!" Yeah. And that yeah. was it. You know, yeah. everybody who was playing it, you knew it was a hit. Yeah. If nobody was playing it, you knew it's not a hit. Yeah, so different now. That's kind of gone. Everything's now. based on views, based on views. views absolutely. Else, you know, you you might actually find a song on the net that you really like and you think it's good, but you know what? X Y Z is going to turn around and say, "But no, it hasn't got the hits." So yeah. automatically, yeah. they've assumed that's not a good yeah. song. The brain works. Yeah. And it's interesting you say that because there are so many extremely successful, um, quote unquote, and I say this in quotes, artists out there. Um, we have it even in the media business who really aren't good. Yeah. They're really not good. And yeah. it's because they're not good, you know, and this sounds kind of weird, but because they're not good, people watch them because yeah. they're crap. Yeah. And they can't believe it and they share it with people and they're oh my god, check this out. And all of a sudden this person becomes this like sensation. Yeah. 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 So I guess Absolutely. that what, what it comes down to, and I feel that Anoop has done something really smart with this album from what I'm hearing. Um, and, and and that is that he's just put himself out there, who he is as an artist right now at this point in his life, what he loves to do what he cherishes in terms of the different genres of music. And um, I think that's very indicative of kind of what's happening in this world today, where should we really be putting ourselves in boxes? Should we be, you know, if we're not in this box, we should be in this one. And if we're in this one, we can't be in that one. And what I love about, you know, this generation is that none of that matters to them. Yeah. They don't they don't identify with boxes and cliches and, you know, what historically has or has not happened. They're mm -hmm. truly about being authentically who they are. And mm -hmm. that is what I know that we're going to get out of Alter Ego when it drops in two days. I cannot wait um, to get my hands on it. Um, Anoop, I'm really, really excited about the future for you because, you. you know, you're, what you're thinking about mm -hmm. is about being a true artist, right? Mm -hmm. And... Very few people, you know, especially, you know, in today's world, think about the art and the work associated with it because they're too busy wanting to, like Nindi said, um, you know, be famous and get the likes and the views and the comments, etc. And that stuff isn't as important as, you know, what is going to create the legacy that you need like the legacy of being true to who you are and sharing that with the world. I mean, the platforms really should be about sharing who you are with the world. We've lost and, you, Raj. Oh, shoot. Um, I think we just, me and Nindy just lost, lost the audio. Oh, I had a phone well, call for I, a second. Oh, I actually, you guys are still live on my side. Uh, Anoop can hear you. Anoop, can. Anoop just, let you, just let your mum and dad know that they, they're still live on my Instagram. Uh, we we can hear you now just from the speaker because I've lost audio. Okay. okay, perfect. But I just want to let you know that you guys are still on Instagram. <laughs> That's good. I can still see you guys. So any final words that you'd like to share that you'd like to um, tell people out there about the album, about, you know, maybe some other things that you got coming down the pike? Um, well, I want to definitely say yes. one thing. We've already yes. had the comments of, you know, what's going on in Bollywood right now. And yes. there's some, you know, you obviously get the really good comments, the supporters and, you know, the people who give love. But we've also been getting, this is complete nepotism. This is nepotism. complete Oh my nepotism. gosh, yes. Like, yeah, you know, you know, uh, you people need to understand, Rod, that whether he's going to go into the music, we're going to encourage our kids and we're going to, so we're all going to support our kids. Yes. Whatever they want to do. And if this is his dream, you know, we're going to support him. So if you want to call it nepotism, whatever, that's up to you. But then I switched it around a bit once somebody wrote that on my um, Instagram and said, this is completely silver spoon fed. This is nepotism. And I replied and said, hey, mate, this is nepotism. Hashtag nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> so we turn it, anybody who says nepotism, we turn it to nepotism now. Oh, my God. I love it. But, you know, it's really interesting that you guys are um, saying this. I mean, I understand on one side, you know, about the whole nepotism thing um, when it's done in the wrong way right? Yeah. But that's not the case here, right? Mm -hmm. Here you have a young man, a young artist who is extremely, um, you know, full of creativity, 
right? And he and and he is a very different identity. Like nepotism to me is about you know um, being. They don't have the talent. Being, but they yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The exactly. And 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 they also kind of follow that same route. Yeah. Anoop isn't doing that. Anoop is not doing Bhangra. Anoop is not kind of, you know, just isolating it just to the world that you guys come from. He is fully his own identity. And yeah. I can't, and I, I, and if you don't believe it, guys, just go and like, pick up the album. Like, you know, yeah. it's going to, you know, you know, it's going to be something really incredible from someone that's had music in them from the womb, basically. Yeah, <laughs> right? I can't wait to, um, you know, hear the album. It's dropping in the next couple of days, October the 10th yeah. folks anywhere that music can be downloaded and streamed you can yeah. check it out um what and what are the last words of anything that you guys want to um share here we just want to say for all i mean to all the fans obviously everybody who has been supporting newbie mm -hmm. he has a whole bunch of supporters on his own instagram who really keep always you know saying amazing you know we love this we love that please thank you very much mm -hmm. keep keep supporting uh, supporting him because Everything he's doing now, musically, he's doing it to to express himself, and yeah. hopefully you guys will enjoy it, and it will make you guys happy at the same time as it'll make him happy that you guys are happy. So, uh, if you can all just keep supporting, and don't forget the album's gonna drop this Saturday, 10, and 10, 20. 10, 10, 20, which was Nidhi's idea for the date. 10, yeah. 10, 20. I was like, ooh, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, was that new? Did really, you do that uh, numerologically? Did no, you, no. no. I, I was just being silly, Raj. I was like, 10, 10, <laughs> I was like, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 plus 10 is 20. 10 plus 10 is 20. Man, I was like, oh, shut up. Man. <laughs> 10 plus 10 is 20. <laughs> okay, that's fine. But I like that. I like the number, so it's good. Um, and that's it, really. And then Easy obviously, to remember. Nindy's, Nindy's doing her thing with Nindy Call Cosmetics. Uh, yeah. Doing really well. Touch Ward, thank you for everyone who's supporting yeah. her stuff. Absolutely. And I've got a whole bunch of new releases coming out um, from different different artists and collaborations. More mainstream stuff and I am slowly but surely not mentioning too many things getting him involved into some of the mainstream music now right because so that's the vibe music. of his musical style right because yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean very yeah. fortunate that very, very somebody big. really big from the mainstream has picked up something from him of, of him <laughs> they, they love his stuff they love his style in fact they wanted to manage him and said we're going to change his name to Lil Manj and <laughs> And Nupi goes, no, 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 Noob's still is fine. Like, right, yes. cool. right. Oh my God, so, I love So, you know, this. hopefully Rabdi made now with God's blessings. You yes. know, let's see where this goes. Absolutely. And my final question before I let you guys go, um, which I don't want to do because I, I kind of like, I, you know, I feel like I haven't seen you guys for so long yeah. and I, and, and I, and I miss, miss you guys. <laughs> right? This is us catching up, right? <laughs> You know? <laughs> Absolutely. But to wrap this up, um, my final thing is, is that, you know, the world is still very much on lockdown and on standstill. Um, and, you know, they are kind of being limited to being a part of, you know, the family environment for like long periods of time, which is causing all kinds of, you know, negativity as well as positivity. You guys have been, you know, as a close knit family, seeing each other all the time from the get-go this is something this is the lifestyle for you guys mm -hmm. any advice for people out there since this is what you do whether you know whether there is or is not a pandemic what can you say to people out there to kind of get through the whole too much family time like what how can they how can they navigate it especially since now we're going to be getting into like the ugly weather yeah yeah we were talking about that the other day like you know oh my god it's gonna get cold and it's gonna yeah. get ho horrible and then we'll... i think you know what i think you got to just stay positive and stay within within your own family just keep it interesting just yeah you know, keep, keep things moving keep it interesting you know what i'm not even gonna lie sometimes we'll just blast music and we'll have a dance at home yeah. like, yes new people blast some music and we'll just start dancing around like yeah. it's the most craziest thing ever but we just do it and then Absolutely. some days we'll say, okay, Nupi, what movie do you want to watch? And he'll be like, this one. And we're like, okay, let's watch that one. Or sometimes me and Nindy will think of some really old movies. The other day, Nupi watched. Quick recommendation. Uh, yes. Definitely watch Goodfellas. Yes. <laughs> it's a good movie. one. Yeah. So, it's a so you know, we, we just keep it interesting. Like within our little circle. I think, you know what, Rod? We really yes. needed this. Like we realized that we've been, everybody's just traveling here, there. You know, we've been. 
apart a lot yeah. and we were just really glad that we could spend that time with each other it's and been awesome. nothing but positive outcomes yeah. right you know, right there is a lot of you know negative stuff happening out there but you've got to keep it within your four walls with your family there's nobody better than your own family and everybody really needs to realize that yeah right absolutely i completely support. agree with that my darling family i love you so much and i cannot wait until we can have big fat hugs and some charpani yeah absolutely Love soon very God. soon absolutely thank you. Thank, you. thank you so much and anoop good luck my darling it's gonna thank be amazing you. can't wait